1919 was an auspicious year in history. The First World War ended, ushering a drastic change in the world order. The Philippine Islands had been a U.S. territory for two decades and was promised independence under the Jones Law of 1916. Progressive reformers saw the country and its people as a major target for modernization and education was its main weapon. Seven forward-looking Filipinas came together in 1919 to create a school where young women could gain the knowledge and skills that would make them modern women. Paz Marquez Benitez was the first president of the Philippine Women's College. Jose Abad Santos was its first chairman of the Board of Trustees. Francisca Tirona Benitez was the second president and with her husband, Dean Conrado, guided the school from a house on A. Flores Street to its iconic Taft Avenue campus. In 1932, the college became a university, making PWU the first university for women in Asia founded by Asians. It provided a space where innovations in education flourished and young people were encouraged to be the best that they could be. For over 100 years, the Philippine Women's University has been known as a leader in quality education. In 1934, PWU moved into its main campus on Taft Avenue and since the 1970s has been co-educational. Located in the heart of Metro Manila, it is easily accessible by public transport and surrounded by affordable housing. Today's PWU offers undergraduate and graduate courses in several fields of study. Its business and management programs are responsive to the needs of industry using evolving technology for global competence. PWU graduates excel in arts and sciences, education, social work, and diplomacy. Its fine arts and music programs have produced outstanding graduates through a holistic education that treasures heritage as well as excellence. PWU has pioneered in fields such as food science, nutrition and dietetics, medical technology, pharmacy, and nursing. PWU continues to play an essential role in producing graduates who possess the skills that make them competitive in the country and anywhere in the world. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this year's Best at FBAD Jury Exhibition. I am Mervy Pablo, the host of this FB Live broadcast, and it's wonderful to have you all here. Um, in the next few hours, it's packed with exciting surprises as we look at the combination of each artist's practice 
um, for this academic year. So, we all know that this event could have been made better if this was a face-to-face -face endeavor. And indeed, this has been an ambitious project in the time of the pandemic. What motivates SPAD to pursue this professional exhibition and competition exclusive to SPAD students is that the trust that we have towards our community of students, creatives whom we respect, respect as adults and responsible learners. And the aim of this juried exhibition is to recognize the potentials and grit of our SPAD students. And we are very happy of the submissions we have received for the first ever Best at SPAD juried exhibition. And our winners and finalists demonstrated their creativity, courage, consensuousness, perseverance, with commitment, resilience, and optimism, the characteristic of a true PWU stakeholder would have. But without further ado, let's welcome our esteemed panel of guests. Let's have a message from Mr. Marco M. Benitez, our university. Dr. Felina Young, University Chancellor in SVPAA, Dean Jane Toralba of the School of Fine Arts and Design, together with a distinguished set of jurors for this event, hardworking faculty members, friends and guests watching on social media, both here and abroad, good day and welcome to the best at SFAD, our first ever virtual all-student jury contemporary visual arts exhibition. I hope all of you are safe and well in the midst of this pandemic. Firstly, congratulations Dean Jing to you and your team. Professor James Tana, the exhibition's curator, Professor Mervy Pueblo, our SFAD graduate program coordinator and moderator of the jury deliberation, and the rest of the organizers for another innovative and creative event in this virtual sphere. The university is extremely proud that despite the immense challenge posed by the pandemic and the varying degrees of community quarantine we've been in for the past year and a quarter, the School of Fine Arts and Design has continued to churn out innovative and creative ways of delivering the PWU brand of education in this flexible learning environment. From being the first to take advantage of remote learning to bring on international faculty advisors, collaborating with alumni to stage virtual art exhibitions through the Spectrum Art Gallery, launching 3D printed mini etching presses for students to learn printmaking while at home, conducting research projects with the NCCAA, and now this first virtual student juried visual arts exhibition, SFAD continues to be as innovative and creative as ever. From its beginnings as a PWU affiliate school under the Philippine College of Music and Fine Arts in 1952, with Felicing Terona as its founding dean, its establishment as the School of Fine Arts in 1957, with Araceli Limcauco Dance as its first director, to its reconstitution as the Institute of Fine Arts, and now the current School of Fine Arts and Design, SFAD has lived up to a standard of excellence, regularly churning out exceptional graduates, winners of national art competitions, renowned artists and designers, and even pioneers and icons of the arts and design industry. The university is not only steeped in rich history for arts and design, but also equally renowned for its achievements in music and dance particularly its two national artists, Lucrecia Casilag for music and Lucrecia Urtula for dance, the former a dean of the School of Music and both pioneering directors of the Bayanihan, the National Folk Dance Company of the Philippines. As a hundred-year-old institution, PWU had been set in many of its ways, from the mode of teaching and learning, the conduct of student activities, university events, and the delivery of student services, in March of last year, however, the pandemic turned all of that on its head. It forced us to immediately prioritize the health and safety of our community, then think of imaginative ways to deliver our brand of education. To say that we were out of our comfort zone was an understatement. We faced an avalanche of challenges. Not only did we need to immediately migrate all lessons online, we also had to consider the varying levels of connectivity of our students the types of devices they owned, 
their home environment, and many others. More so, we also had to consider the plight of our employees, some of whom were incapable of working remotely, either due to lack of equipment or as a function of their role. It took a lot of imagination, creativity, collaboration, listening to feedback, and reworking what we had done to get us to where we are now. Much improved, but dare I say, still a work in progress. All the while, our biggest source of inspiration and affirmation was seeing, or at least getting the sense, that everyone was on board with overcoming this pandemic. While it was true that there was some resistance at the beginning from the general public on the continuance of education, the moment we firmly decided that education must continue, the community rallied behind that decision. The message was clear. We were all in this together. Little by little, we saw innovations and best practices in the way classes were conducted via flexible learning. As professors and students adjusted to the mode of learning, creative ways of delivering both synchronous and asynchronous classes came to the fore. The use of technology apps such as Jamboard and Google Forms, videos for flipped classrooms, and a host of other innovations allowed faculty to interact more effectively with their students. Even project-based outputs took on a whole new dimension when merged with the digital realm. University activities, webinars, workshops, and even recitals all had to be migrated to the online platform, and it was heartening to see how both students and seasoned faculty adjusted and embraced this format. The beauty of it was everyone's willingness to learn from the experiences of others and to share their own experiences. As SFAD innovated and conducted skills-based classes in their white box tech room, their very own virtual skills lab, the School of Music also began doing auditions and even recitals online, a practice previously unheard of with the limitations on connectivity and sound quality. Even the Bayanihan, who for the past 24 years did their yearly Sayaw workshop in campus and at the CCP, migrated to the virtual realm and had their recital over the CCP and PW Facebook pages. Thus, as we have seen, the possibilities are endless. And as we continue to be constrained by the levels of community quarantine, we also continue to push the boundary of possibilities of how education, particularly skills-based disciplines like music, dance, and the arts, can be taught. What is important and what I think PW has done commendably is to have an open mind and a collaborative spirit. In Ethan Hawke's TED Talk on creativity entitled, Give Yourself Permission to be Creative, which Dean Toralba shared with me, he says, creativity is vital. It's the way we heal each other. In singing our song, in telling our story, in inviting you to say, hey, listen to me, and I'll listen to you. We're starting a dialogue. And when you do that, this healing happens. Similarly, as we collaborate to find the most effective ways to teach and guide our students, we express ourselves, our creativity, and we begin to heal. Likewise, in expressing themselves through their artwork in this exhibition, in sharing their experiences during this time of pandemic, I hope our students are not only able to heal, but are able to thrive. So congratulations not only to the would-be winners, but to all those that participated. By expressing yourselves through your artworks, you not only enrich yourselves, but enrich the entire PW community in the process. And for that, we are truly grateful. Thank you and good afternoon. On behalf of um, SFAD and our audience tuned in today, thank you, President Benitez, um, for the warm thoughts and inspiring vision you have shared with us amidst the current situation. Indeed, PW is the home of um, creatives uh, with integrity and excellence. And amidst this difficult and trying times, and yes, we are all in this together. Thank you so much. All right, so next, we have a message from the Dean of School of Fine Arts and Design, Ms. Josephine Saralba. Um, she wished to give us her message live, but at this time, it's very early morning in her time zone. 
because she has sent us our pre-recorded message. So put your hands together for Dean Fralba. Good morning. We already know how art and design are operational in our lives. Online social platforms, ads, movies, books, paintings, fonts, posters. They all shape our world and our worldview on a daily basis. More than ever, and especially now during this pandemic, we see how creatives are very influential. With hand washing the diagrams and infographics educating us on healthy protocols, while appreciation to frontliners remind us of what is significant. The arts are of critical importance right now on multiple levels. As we rise to the challenge of our new normal of life in this global pandemic, we are seeing more clearly what needs to change in our pre-COVID-19 society. Engaging with the arts awakens curiosity, provides solace, allows us to be present with our thoughts and feelings and our basic humanity. They bring people and ideas together and help us connect even when we are asked to stay apart. So necessary in these times of struggle. With this, I welcome you to the first ever Best at SFAD competition and exhibition. We have envisioned this to highlight, as the name suggests, the best student art and design works at the PWU School of Fine Arts and Design. This is intended to inspire, motivate, and challenge our students to create their most compelling works and show the best they can be at SFAT. The exhibition celebrates student achievements and energies towards creative pursuits as SFAD aspires to reignite the spirit and creativity in our community. I remember the words, success comes to those who ceaselessly put themselves out there. It comes to those who are not afraid to fail. I so I applaud those who believed in themselves and had the courage to submit their works. I imagine it was not an easy task to win over the inner critic that many times prevents us from forward action. It is that fleeting moment of self-determination and initiative that allows success to surprise us in our careers. May this experience propel you to continue your artistic pursuits. And for those who did not join us this year, you will still have a chance to submit next year, as this event will now be held annually. Best at SFAD competition and exhibition are a part of many artistic initiatives by our school that help bring us closer to one another within our PWU family. I would like to acknowledge the organizers of Best at SFAD, beginning with Mervi Pueblo, who came up with this initiative and effectively organized it, to James Tana, our curator, who tireless, tirelessly worked on and off-site, to the organizing committee of faculty, students, and admin assistants for their time and effort in making this a success. Thank you too for other departments in PWU who collaborate with us in our activities. Of course, the juried competition cannot do without our esteemed judges, Beata Fleischmann and Rosario Estrada. Thank you for sharing with us your expertise in the field of arts and design. And finally, our ceaseless gratitude to our dear President Benitez for fully supporting SFAD and its faculty, students, and each and every one of our activities. So again, welcome to the debut of our first Best at SFAD competition and juried exhibition. And congratulations to all our winners and exhibitors. Thank you, Dean Faralba, for sharing your thoughts about the relevance of art and design amid the pandemic and its power to move people or society, and for sharing your vision of this event, aside from the warm messages addressed to us all. So, without further ado, um, here's a sneak peek at the exhibition. This is a minute video uh, um, production created by our PWU Multimedia Center. 
directed by, I, by our curator, Professor James Tana. So the exhibition um, was curated by Mr. James Luigi Tana. He is the 2020 Ateneo Art Awards Palo the Desma Foundation Art Criticism Essay Awardee and a museum worker. So he played a pivotal role in reviewing submissions in, in person and in coordination of this event. So um, even if he could not make it today, um, let, let's give him a big round of applause to show our appreciation to all the effort that he have given to this program or into this exhibition. Now, we shall announce the Best of Espad finalist who has shown great determination and creativity for this professional exhibition exclusive to PWU School of Fine Arts and Design students. As I read their name, let's give them your applause even if you're alone at home. For sure, um, our set of finalists or exhibiting visual artists will appreciate the positive vibe you can broadcast in spirit. So let's read their names. Limer Barbado. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hannah Espiritu. Carla Isabella Puella. Ian Chester Inoy. Hi, Ian. Abigail Ragine. Or Ragwin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Luvia Marie Ramon. Hello, Paul. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And Dreb. Jake Presidio. Congratulations. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Congratulations to you all. So the selection for the 2021 Best at Esbud entries have been wonderful. And Professor James Sana did a fantastic job curating these pieces at the PWU Helena Z. Benitez Hall. So if you happen to pass by PWU, you can view the exhibition even from the outside facade of the um, Helena Z. Benitez Hall. And, but of course, please do follow um, the regular protocol, okay? Um, so, but should you want to visit, um, set up an appointment days in advance with our ESPAD admin secretary, Ms. Rowena Vidal, so your entry permit can be coordinated, all right? So, before we move to our awarding, um, the Bayanihan Dance Group and Professor Ivar Nicholas Fojas of the PWU School of Music have prepared an intermission number for us. So, let's view that.
that was just a taste of the powerful performance of the Bayanihan group of dancers. So to watch a full performance, you can visit the CCP website to watch out for schedules and performances of this, of this dance group, and perhaps it may be accessible remotely. So um, since its formal organization in 1957 at PWU, the nation, this national dance company has, has mounted over a hundred of tours to foreign countries um, and even locally. So in half a century, Bayanian has performed in six continents, 66 countries, and 700 cities worldwide. So Bayanian has awakened a new pride among Filipinos in their cultural heritage, added in a new dimension of the country's dance tradition, and has built a rich reserve of international goodwill. So thank you, Mrs. Susie Benitez and the Bayanian group for allowing us to air bits of your performance to the event. So up next is Professor Ivar Pojas, a classical guitar master from the PWU School of Music, who shared with us a recording of one of his excellent guitar performances. So he's an awarded Fulbright scholar, um, and he has pursued his PhD, and he will perform for us this piece, Antonio Carlos Dubim Estrada Branca as arranged by Paolo Bellina. Um, thank you, Professor Ivar Pohars, for that um, wonderful serenade. And I hope that from our exhibition sneak peek and the intermission numbers uh, got everyone inspired and become and became more motivated to be the best in their specific field. So now, this is the moment that we have all been waiting for, for this FV Live 
broadcast. And we'll start off introducing our set of judges, followed by the criteria before the announcement of our winners and special mentions. So our DV set, thanks to Beata Fleischmann um, and um, Ms. Rika Estrada um, and the Dean for um, being our jury to this event and with their knowledge and expertise and from coming um, from different fields in the visual arts, SPAD is very confident confident that the evaluation of the entries were reviewed objectively. So if any of our judges is here, please say a, a quick hello or, or wave to our live audience. Oh, Viata? Hi, thanks, Viata. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure, Moby. Same here. All right. So this year's competition was very tight, given the two filters or processes each submission went through, just as serious as the goldsmith would create gold. So the first filter is the test of grit. And what this entails is a review of a student's determination of wanting to be part of this exhibition by means of sending or delivering their work to PWU just like any professional visual artist would do, which is a mark of resilience and degree of professionalism by means of completing the requirements and how well the work is presented. Then afterwards, the submitted works are carefully selected and evaluated by the curator, then reviewed by the jury, guided by the objectives and or criteria of this Best at SPAD juried exhibition. But what are the criteria for evaluation? One would be the work contributes in expanding the visual arts language in the Philippines or in the world. Two, the work is rich with meaning and it is effectively communicated visually. Three, the work demonstrates mastery of the materials and or high craftsmanship. And lastly, the work and the artist carries a spirit of competitiveness in terms of having the risk taker factor. Indeed, these individuals that you can see here on our screen displayed a typical PWU characteristic that is combined of optimism, creativity, and confidence, which together empowers them to reappraise the current situation and regulate their feelings in attempt to be the very best that they can be for this professional exhibition. But among their entries, which, which art and design project stood out the best that met all the four criteria with the high marks from our jury? So hello artists, are you ready? All right. For the best art project category, can we have a drum roll, please? Juana and Pandemia by Luvia Marie Ramos. Congratulations, Luvia, for your work. Juana and Pandemia won the Best Art Project Award. So let's give it up for Luvia. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Great, so your piece won for earning the high points for all criteria. More particularly, the jury have agreed that the work Juana and Pandemia carried the spirit of competitiveness in terms of the risk-taking qualities, among other entries. And let's read an excerpt from the evaluation from one of our judges to understand this better. So this is what Yada have said. So it's a clever play on the Madonna and Child. The familiarity of the image caught my eye. Then as soon as I am drawn in, I start to notice differences. The child is looking away. This made me want to read more about what the artist tries to express. So reading her statement also impressed me as um, they are documenting aspects of the community life that she have personally been involved in. I think the artist had a good grasp of showing simultaneous contrasting outlooks or response. It makes me wonder if, if she is showing the hopeful, hopefulness 
or the hopelessness of the situation. So that was a good review of your work. So congratulations, um, Luvia, for winning the best art project. So let's give her a warm round of applause again. All right. Okay. Next. Now for the best design project category. Drum roll, please. Blending into the waves, remodeling of work from home, bedroom setup by Abigail Ragin. So congratulations, Abigail. <laughs> so there is no contest here. Among the initial online submission of entries, Abigail has proven herself to be the very best among the rest for the design category. Because aside from the degree of professionalism and quality of work she has submitted, she demonstrated determination and resilience. Grit, in other words, by completing the requirements of sending her design pitch and exhibition materials in PWU. So congratulations, um, Abigail. So this is a well thought project and good job for the hard work. Okay. So our two winners have proven to be the very best this school year 2020-2021. So we may have two winners, but it does not mean the program ends here. So SPAD and the Best at SPAD jury would like to acknowledge other art projects that also received high marks per evaluation criteria. So let's congratulate the following special mentions as well. First up, Ian Chester Enoy. Yeah, so this piece is also an exemplary work among other submissions, as it also received the highest vote for the first criteria, contributing in expanding the visual arts language in the Philippines. So the jury found this work to show courage and experimentation of materials and pushing the limitations of what art is in the Philippines. So good job, Ian. Right. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So congratulations. All right. So next, also one of the jury's favorites for its visceral qualities and positive vibes. So among the other artworks, this piece also received the highest vote for the second criteria, a work having a rich meaning in how it is effectively communicated. So congratulations, Carla. Um, this work is delicious. It's unfortunate that you're not here, but still, good job. Please. So another interesting work among other submissions that also received the highest vote for the third criteria demonstrating of mastery of the medium and of high craftsmanship. So this piece, the Dreamweaver, got this special mention and you did a fine job, Lemur Barbados. Congratulations. Lemur, you're here? Thank you, yeah, all right, congrats. Okay, so our participants to this jury exhibition, give yourself a pat on the back as this is one of the steps for your future success. So good job. All right. So PWU SVAD and the jury and the jury appreciates the hard work you all have given and would like to send you um, and the audience their message. Hi there, my name is Beata Fleischmann and I have the privilege of being a juror for Best at SFAD 2021. And it was truly a pleasure to view work from such a talented group of artists and designers. And it gave me insight into the culture of the Philippines that I didn't know before. And in fact, it expanded my world by looking at your work. So my wish for you as artists and designers is really to just keep taking risks in your practice so that it expands the visual arts language, not just locally, but as a representation globally. Um, I look forward to seeing where your practice leads you next, and thank you. So, it was also a pleasure in having you sit at our jury, Beata. The thoughts you have shared about our students' work 
and country during the deliberation were appreciated. So let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marubi. It was really a great experience. Same here. All right, thanks. Okay, so now let's listen to the warm message by Rika from the Cultural Center of the Philippines, one of our guest jury as well. Congratulations to all the participants of the inaugural Best at SPAD Art and Design Competition. Um, it's, it's been my honor to be part of the jury. Um, and it was such a great experience being able to look at all your work and being able to talk about your work and discuss with, our uh, with my fellow jurors. We, we took this task very seriously. Um, it, was such a, uh, it was such a nice experience. And I thank um, the PWU School of Fine Arts and Design for having me. Um, student uh, art competitions are very close to my heart because um, it's really nice to be able to see where art is going and where um, the possibilities of art in the future. Um, in my work at the CCP, um, I, I work with a lot of artists, I, I work with a lot of curators, performers, and um, it's, it's so nice to be able to see the growth um, of these artists from when they're students up to when they, you know, start exhibiting and showing their work and until they become leaders and, and you know, recognized members of the art community. So part of my job at the CCP is also running the CCP 13 Artists Award. And um, if, if not many of you already know, there have been a number of alumni of PWU um, and a number of faculty as well that are part of the CCP 13 Artists Award. So I think this experience of the best at SPAD um, is my sneak peek maybe into the future of the CCP 13 Artists Award. Um, so thank you again for having me. Uh, I hope to be able to see your work in person um, and to see all of you and meet all of you in person the next couple of weeks uh, or months. Um, in the meantime, please stay safe and please continue to create and um, take care. Thank you. So that was an excellent point, Rika, that the work that the youth put out today offers a glimpse of the future in the Philippine art scene. And who knows, maybe one of our participants uh, or SPAD student today will become one of the 13 artists awardee in the future. So that being said, we hope the young generation of cultural producers will continue to give their very best in each and everything that matters in life. So we are pleasantly surprised by the number of our viewers. And um, before our closing message, we would like to take this an opportunity to thank the people that made this event possible. So Professor James Dana, our guest curator, Biata Fleischmann, and Rika Estrada, and Dean Taralba, Professor A.K. Okol and her SPAD social media team, um, President Marco Benitez, Ms. Rowena Vidad, Dr. Ivar Pojas, Dr. Susie Benitez, Mr. Robert Thomas of the multimedia team, um, Professor Nelson Gillian of, uh, and his PWU marketing team, Mr. Sandro Carino and the PWU facilities and management team, Mrs. Marilu, Marilu G. Mirasol, Ms. Ana Del Rosario, Ms. Portia Abigail Bakirin, and Professor, Nuki, Professor Noel Kizan, um, the SPUD faculty, the creative management class, Professor James Dana, and our live audience. So thank you. And congratulations to all our exhibiting artists. You are all winners in our book. So let's give them a warm round of applause again. So the bottom line of this event is for SPAD to make a case that our students have the capacity to be their best despite ECQ, GCQ, and or distance communication and for SPAD to be a vibrant creative hub. And this led us to designing this very first professional but student-centered annual event. So yes, it is ambitious, but we are really counting on our students' potentials 
today as we envision them to be one of the best artists and designers in the future. And this starts by asking all our students to continue giving their very best in every project that they make, whether it's for a coursework or professional or personal project and practice grit at all times because there can be no true excellence without grit. So on behalf of PWU Schools and Fine Arts and Design, thank you all for joining us today. And we hope that this event has been inspiring and we hope that we can convince all our students to take this transformational and creative journey with us again for the next school year. Again, congratulations to the visual artists who made it to the jury the exhibition. And as we end this program, if you haven't subscribed on our PWU official fan page and PWU SPAD official page, kindly do so, so, that, so that you can be updated of the latest news and or art opportunity. So kindly hit that like button or heart. Now, as our exemplary 2021 Desert SPAD participants would appreciate your support. So this is Marie Pablo, your host and the Desert SPAD chairperson and had advanced happy National Independence Day and have a good morning or afternoon or good night wherever you are. Bye. All right. Bye.